This video is sponsored by PCBWay, more on them later. Hot take, I don't like the PS3, PS2, or PS1 controllers. That's why I use this adapter to use my DualSense with the PS1 and 2, but I have never been able to replace this godforsaken DualShock 3 until now. This box right here will not only allow me to use my DualSense with my PS3, but also use almost any controller I want with a variety of consoles and customize the controls to my heart's content. The best part is it's cheap to make and there are multiple different ways to build it. This is the OGX Mini. It's an open source project that I stumbled across while perusing my YouTube recommendations. Shout out to Justin Garrison for making his video that inspired me to make this one. And you should definitely go watch his video after this because he makes his in a different style from mine that you might actually prefer. I'll link Justin's video down in the description next to the link to the GitHub for this project. He made his with just a Pico and a female USB cable. Pretty simple and easy, but I wanted mine to be compact and look a little bit cleaner. So I went with the RP2040 and made these boards with the help of PCBWay. Not only did they sponsor this video, but they made these high quality boards that I needed to complete this project. The ordering process was extremely simple too. I just downloaded the Gerber file from the GitHub and dropped it into PCBWay's website for an instant quote. That's all I needed to do to submit my order. It's that easy. Another thing I love about PCBWay is if I don't wanna do all the soldering, I don't have to. I can give them the bill of materials and they will also assemble the board for me. While I did do the soldering myself for this project, I've done it a bunch of times, like with the Frog Boy color I made a while back. The OGX Mini also needs a 3D printed shell. And while I have my own 3D printer, if you don't, don't worry. PCBWay also offers a 3D printing service. Heck, you can have them CNC a shell made of metal if you wanted to. There are so many cool projects that PCBWay makes possible, and I will have their link down below, right above the other links you need for this project. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now that we have everything we need from them, let's put it all together. We should actually start with installing the firmware. And while I'm not normally a software guy, it's incredibly easy. Just go to the latest releases on the GitHub and download the .uf2 file that matches your board. For me, that's the one that says RP0. Then plug your board into the computer while holding down the boot button and a file window will pop up. Just drag and drop the UF2 file you downloaded and your board will automatically eject itself once the transfer is complete. So once that file window disappears, you can just unplug it. Now let's do some soldering. I like to start with the SMD components. There are a few ways you can solder these down, but we just need to solder two 27 ohm resistors here. Though we can optionally solder an LED and another 470 ohm resistor here for an indicator light. Since I have this book of 0805 SMD components, I decided to just do it all since I had them all already. Then from there, I like to solder the zero board down by hand. You really only need a few of these points soldered, but I think it's best to solder them all. Then last but not least, solder our USB-A port on the other end. Now we can close it up in our 3D printed shell. There are no screw posts here, so I ended up just hot gluing everything together after I tested everything, which means we should go test this. For me, I just connected my PS3 to the USB-C port on the OGX Mini and plugged my controller into the USB-A port. It won't work at first because it defaults to the original Xbox mode. That's why it's called the OGX Mini, because this project was originally made so you weren't stuck using the Duke with your original Xbox. Anyways, with the console on, I held down the button combo for the PS3 and Boom, it just works now. It is that simple to get up and running, but you can customize it even further if you want to with the web app. If you plug it into the computer, just like I did with the PS3 and then hold down this button combo, you can edit a ton of different things within the web app. You can have different settings for different consoles, as well as have multiple profiles. This makes it super easy to swap button layouts between different games and consoles, so you don't have to worry about the Nintendo layout confusing you when you swap between consoles. Now, you may be thinking, I wish this was wireless. Well, there is a way you can build it to make this a wireless adapter. I just didn't do that here because, well, honestly, I got paid by PCBWay to make it with their boards. But also, like I said, this box is clean and compact, and I don't mind being wired here and avoiding any possible latency. While there are a ton of possibilities with the OGX Mini, obviously not every console and controller can be supported. So let's go over those real quick. Here are all the consoles that are currently supported. Here are all the controllers and adapters currently supported. And here are all of the planned additions. The thing I like about the shell I chose is it still gives us easy access to the boot button so we can easily update the OGX Mini for those future additions. And updating is the exact same simple process 
process as the initial firmware setup. If you still have questions that I may have missed, it's probably over on the GitHub, so go look over there. But what do you guys think of the OGX Mini? Let me know in those comments down below. I think this is freaking awesome. And if you think so too, you should leave a like and probably subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Your help is always appreciated. But that's about it from me. So like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later, guys. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand.